Okay. Testing, because this is a new mic. I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. I'm very happy that this is working a little better. Let me just kind of mess around with my audio for a second. But hello! Welcome in, everyone. Welcome to stream. Um, who do I see so far? I see Kenny and Oz. Welcome in! And Daria, of course, but she's always here. Um, hello, welcome in to you guys. Welcome to stream. Um, today... Oh, and Bray, welcome in. You weren't first, Ray, I'm sorry, but hello, welcome in. Anyway. Um, today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over foreshortening. So crisp and clear. I know it's amazing. It's amazing. I have, like, a, my dad actually set up a microphone arm now, so it's not just on my desk. Like, he set it up, like, what? Like, <laughs> like half an hour before a stream. So now I have a mic arm, and it's not, like, messing around with my desk or anything. It's great. It's fantastic. Um, you might hear me playing around with it a lot, though, so my apologies if you hear a lot of, like, random metal bits and whatever. Um, but hopefully I sound better. So, but it should. Um, but hello! Welcome in, everyone. Um, like it says over here, we're gonna be working with foreshortening today. Foreshortening, if you don't know what that is, is a really extreme version of... Um... Oh my god. A really extreme version of perspective. So we're gonna be working with bodies and whatnot. This... And foreshortening does tend to be really, really tough for a lot of people. Um, that's fine. That's why we're here to learn about it and talk about it. Oh, I forgot to change the the latency. Oh, well, that's fine. Um, but yeah. Before we get going, though, we all know the drill. I'm pretty sure we all do anyway. So let's talk about what we're doing. Because, if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds. And we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd, too, if you're an art nerd too be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below. And check out our website for our class offerings. Where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors. Because we're not just a YouTube channel. We are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us, we can keep making free content. Consider supporting us on Patreon for as little as $2 per month. Where you can get access to tons of perks. Like my working files, critique sessions, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots so be sure to check those out before they are gone okay okay let me go through everything hello drew welcome in foreshortening yes marlene we are doing foreshortening today um i'm gonna preface and say that like i was up till five yesterday so i'm not that tired anymore but i am still a little woozy so a lot of this, I woke up at nine. So a lot of this lesson is going to be kind of, I might be a bit all over the place just as a warning, um, but I'm going to do my best because I've been trying out a new method and I want to see if I can actually teach it. Um, but yeah, okay. Foreshortening. foreshortening. So, what is foreshortening? For those who don't know. All right, if you're in here, I'm assuming you know, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. So, foreshortening. What is foreshortening? So, foreshortening is a type Extreme. Is I spell ex extreme extreme? That's just a weird looking M. Oh, we're working a Medi Bang again today. Last week was Clip, and then the week before that was Photoshop. So we're in Medi Bang once again. Then next week we're gonna go back to Photoshop. Hi, hello, fish taco salad. Welcome in. Hi, night owls rules. Oh no, last night was it was a lot. I should not have been up till five. It was a bad decision. <laughs> uh, but it's foreshortening against a type of extreme perspective. Most frequently. Done with. People, it's one limbs. A 
here compressed. Because of out of perspective. All right. Staying up late is hard. I'm not as young as I used to be. You were with us until 4.30, Oz. Do not. <laughs> 4.30? 3.30? Something like that. Okay. So what is foreshortening? Is it Foreshortening is a type of extreme perspective most frequently done with people. You'll see a lot with people. You can see it with everything. Foreshortening applies to absolutely everything. Um, but more often than not, you see it with people. You hear it with people because when you draw it with people, it's the most difficult, usually. Um, when limbs appear compressed, or it's, you can call it when limbs appear compressed because of the added perspective. When I say compressed, it looks like they've been kind of squashed, right? Do something for me. Take, if you take your arm, right? Take any one of your arms, right? You kind of stick them out directly in front of you, right? You notice that when you look down your arm, it looks, if you kind of close one of your eyes, it looks like the length of it has compressed because of the angle that you're looking at it. Right? If you kind of move it to the side, or if you bend your elbow, bring your forearm back up, then your forearm looks like the normal length again. But if you straighten it out, it once again looks very, very long and compressed. You can do the same thing if you have a mirror near you. Just point at yourself. Right, Point at yourself directly from the mirror, and you'll notice that your arm looks a little bit more compressed because of the arm coming towards you. That's foreshortening. We're learning how to do that. It isn't always with arms, but it's more often with arms, legs, whatso whatsoever. I'm good. And what happened yesterday? Oh, no. I was just hanging out with friends. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it had nothing to do with Wayne Campus. Um, it's literally just me, like, making bad decisions and staying up really late. Um, day, off of class to day off of classes today for a reason. No one seems to know, so it's good Friday. It's a good Friday. It is a good Friday. I woke up. I immediately started doing work. And then I went out for burgers. And now we're back here. <laughs> and I'm streaming. Um... I've done over 24 hours not being able to sleep. Oh, yeah. I think the longest I've been awake straight was 26 hours. Um, not not for good reasons. <laughs> Don't do that. I was in high school. Don't do that. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, so it's when limbs appear compressed because of the added perspective. So for a shortening... is considered one of, if not the most difficult thing to draw. So foreshortening is considered one of, if not the most difficult thing to draw in terms of anatomy. Right, so when we foreshorten stuff, when we talk about foreshortening, foreshortening is probably one of, if not the most difficult thing to draw. Like, ever. <laughs> and that's just because when you actually try to foreshorten, you have to think of... Let me actually write these down. You need to think of... Things to think of. Or think about. Number one is, um, whoa, <laughs> proportion, anatomical accuracy, proportion, anatomical accuracy, and perspective accuracy. Right? So there's a lot of things that you need to think about when we do foreshortening. Number one is proportion. When you're drawing your stuff foreshortened, you have to remember to keep all of your limbs proportionate. Right? You can't just draw the, the arm the exact same way. Right? If the arm is coming towards you, the arm will no longer be the exact same length that you would normally draw it. Right? One of the tricks that I love to teach my students is when you draw an arm, right? If you have a shoulder, you have a wrist, right? If you draw dots in the center of them, connect them perpendicular connect them 
where that line is is your elbow and you have your hand and that's like a perfectly proportionate arm this trick no longer works if you're working in foreshortening this is only if your arms are perfectly like in line with any like head-on um viewpoint this trick no longer works in foreshortening so what ends up having to happen is you have to learn how to draw the arm when it's coming forwards right so if you have the elbow like this it's bent and then the arm is facing towards you like this right learning to draw that arm foreshortened this section here is foreshortened right that elbow trick no longer works that bend trick no longer works so you have to figure out what proportions that you want for the arm that's foreshortened or the limb that's foreshortened or the body part that's foreshortened or the entire body that's foreshortened <laughs> All right, so you need to think about proportion. You need to think about anatomical accuracy, right? As people, we have anatomy, right? We've got different parts of the body. We've got different geometry. We've got different forms. When we think of those forms, we need to make sure that we are keeping them in mind when we draw our foreshortening. And the perspective accuracy. You need to think of your geometry. When you draw a bunch of cubes and cylinders in perspective, it's going to operate the exact same way in foreshortening. It's just going to be a little bit more extreme. And you also have to... Oh, let me just do, do it this in front. Do not... Do not force... Limb visibility... Let me read the chat for a second. Hello, Fluxology. Welcome in. You grinded too much Minecraft back then. Valid. To use more of the shapes? Not necessarily. We'll get into that. Um, there's one old piece I did that I really liked. Ex everything except for one badly foreshortened arm. Oof. Hopefully I'll be able to fix that. Yes, sir. Would love to do that. I'm now animating stuff. Yeah, excellent. Foreshortening, yeah. Um, don't you use more, more shapes? Not necessarily. You use the exact same shapes, you just need to learn how to view them in a 3D sense. They no longer are shapes, they are forms. When we are thinking of anything perspective, we are thinking of them in a 3D space. A shape is two-dimensional, a form is three-dimensional. So when I say shapes of the body, I mean the forms. <laughs> I just always mix it up. Um, but we want to make sure that we're thinking of the forms of the body and how to actually apply them to the full figure, um, especially when it's foreshortened. So this one right here, do not force limb visibility. I see that a lot with artists who are just starting out. Limb visibility is if you, as, as artists, when we... Um, just get into foreshortening and we just get into that kind of deal we are so used to you know our arms being like having a certain anatomy attached to it right we're very used to them being a certain length we're very used to them being a certain size we're very used to them being in a certain like viewpoint but when we do that when we work with foreshortening we can no longer think in that way we have to remind ourselves that these parts of the body are being crunched they're being shortened right for shortened <laughs> right we need to remind ourselves that they're being foreshortened so what ends up happening is that um our brains and our hands don't really connect and they're like uh but this arm looks wrong because it's not the correct length so what ends up happening a lot that i see is like say if you have somebody like with their hand directly forwards right i'll see a lot of i'll see a lot of this like that. Actually, it's no curve. It's just like the, the thing here, right? Or if it's like, ugh, it's hard to fake it. It's like, anyway, if you, if you kind of get what I mean, then yeah. But like, you just kind of add in the leg length when it's not supposed to be there. If you have somebody like sitting on the ground, actually, it's easier with legs. If you kind of have somebody sitting on the ground and their legs are supposed to be like facing directly forwards towards you, You'll see them kind of like go like this and then like the foot will be angled up like this. All right? This makes the person look like they're sitting downwards, right? You need to remind yourself that the length of the legs should no longer be visible. Right? So if the person... Ugh, backspace does not work. If the person like is sitting and their legs are facing directly towards you, you're not going to be able to see that like... The top of the thigh might be visible. You might see a bit of the knee. But, like, most of the leg is going to be covered up. Like that. Right? That's not perfect, but it's, like, the... 
Think of it like a spring. Think of, it as a, think of it like a spring. We're gonna get into that. But don't force limb visibility because you're just gonna hurt yourself in the future. Jessie can't force herself to draw incorrectly. It's actually tougher than you think. <laughs> um, okay. But yeah, so don't force limbs of visibility. That's the number one thing. But we're going to talk into actually how to do foreshortening. Because I wanted to give that a whole written explanation first before we dive into actual foreshortening. So I'm going to go over a couple of different techniques that I tend to use. Um because I always believe that there's more than one thing to more than one way to learn something. So I never try to teach just one technique. I like to teach multiple. So for shortening, the number one thing that you've probably seen before. So let's just do methods. Let's save this file actually before I forget. This is stream 48. I've done a lot of these. Oh, that's not the number I wanted. Oh, well, we'll just change that later. Okay, methods. The number one method you've probably seen online, because every artist likes to tout it. Good evening. Hello, HDMC. Welcome in. Number one method that you see is the coil method. The coil or ring method. Think of... Body, as if it wrapped in springs or rings. So as you to keep the curve and 3D-ness of the form coil outwards from initial starting point or Our gradual rings. Coil and hope. Yeah, that's part of it. Okay, so the coil or the ring method. Think of the body as if it's wrapped in springs or rings, right? Take your arm, for instance. Once again, we're gonna, we all got arms probably. Um, but if we have, take your arm for a second, right? If you wrap this thing in a lot of coils or a lot of, or if it had like a spring around it, if you ever had a slinky, I don't know if, like, slinkies are still, like, a thing that kids know. I'm, I'm not that old. But, like, I, I'm very shocked every time that I say something. Um, but imagine your arm, like, you know, if you put a slinky on it and you have a bunch of coils around it, right? Kind of that deal. Imagine those curves that go around the form. Imagine those curves. Um, coils are the way that a lot of artists do it. Rings are a little bit cleaner. That tends to be how I do it. Um... If I use the coil method, I tend to switch between methods depending on what I'm illustrating. Um, but the coils and rings are there. This allows for you to keep the curve and the 3Dness of the form. Right, coil outwards from the initial starting point or draw gradual rings. Oops, that get larger. Grab a limb, grab a limb, grab one of them. You've got, you've got four probably. That's, that's the default, usually, <laughs> is to have four. Um, but yeah, gradual wings that get larger. All right, so if we do the arm, once again, the arm's just the easiest one to do. I'm 20, I have plenty of those. You have slinkies at 20 years old? I'm joking, that's a joke. Um... <laughs> Hello, RK Cubes. Welcome in. All right. So if we have the arm, right? If we think of this in... If we think of coils, right? Think of this first section. Let me actually lock this. I'm going to change the color of this. Oh, let's do it in this color. Okay. 
Okay. So let's say that we started from this one section, right? The base of the arm, which is right there. If we start from there, if we want to plan out our next limb, we're going to start from there. Oops. Uh, I'm going to turn up my correction a little bit just because, like, it gets really not smooth on Medivay. Okay. So if we start from this section, if we want to do the first limb, we can coil it out and it slowly gets larger. Right? Notice what this does is it creates this spring that slowly gets larger. But what it's really doing is it's creating a cylinder. It's creating a cylinder in perspective. Right? If we have our first arm, I should have done this in a different color. So let's just do that again. I'll repeat it anyway. So we start from there. Make the coils a little bit larger. We want to make sure that we are keeping the same curve as we continue outwards. And then, if we had the next part of the arm, we'd start from there, change the angle a bit, and just get larger once again. We need to make sure that we are consistently growing a bit larger. And then if, like, then based on the size of this, that's the size of our wrist. Like, if I had to kind of fix this up a little bit and the shoulder blades here which curves over top and the elbow is right here yeah hello malik welcome in thanks for joining hope you're doing good yes thumbs up so yep so it coils outwards right draw a hand I don't know what position you want. There you go. Peace sign. <laughs> Hands are easy. All right. So we want to make sure the coils get larger. Start from limb base. Coils get larger. Right? The ring method is exactly the same. It's literally just using rings instead of coils. Um, coil The rings I tend to find a little bit neater, a little bit cleaner. That's why I tend to use uh, rings instead of coils. But the coil works exactly the same. The coil helps you keep your consistency of your shape. Uh, rings just help it keep it a little bit neater and easier to follow with the eyes. That's literally it. Um, there's like no difference between the two though. It's the exact same method. I'm back gonna go again to get tea. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Mbezo. Welcome in. Um, so yeah, you want to start from limb base, and the coils will get larger as you continue outwards or towards the viewer. So the pros, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign out pros and cons. So the pros of this method is that it helps keep form consistency. Accurate and smooth. Perspective. So the good thing about the ring method is that it really helps keep form consistency and it helps with accurate and smooth perspective. Especially with these coils, what you're doing is you're creating a really nice looking tube. You're creating a really nice looking tube, a really nice looking cylinder. And what that does is it really helps get your brain in that foreshortening mindset. It really helps get your brain in that like form mindset, you know? And for those who are just coming in, hello, I got a new mic. That's why I sound a bit different. Um, hopefully it sounds better. Um, I tested it a couple times before. Hopefully it sounds like okay, generally. <laughs> um, I might have to steal my my pop filter back from my brother because I don't know how intense it is on stream. Um, but, yes. So, so the pros are it helps keep form consistency and it's accurate and smooth perspective. The cons are that you have this method...
only if it was in perspective. You need to understand. anatomy to do the rest. Now, the coil method is something that everybody uses. I see it everywhere. Everybody uses it. However, the one con that people don't point out is that you're not done when you do the coils. You start with the coils. They're there. They're beautiful. Fantastic. You're not done when you do the coils. You have to put the anatomy back on. The coils, you're just creating a cylinder. You're creating a cylinder and it's working. Pops aren't too bad on me. Okay, excellent. Um, it is? Okay, I'm glad. Okay, but yes, this method only fills in the perspective. It'll allow you to get a good sense of perspective. It'll allow you to get a good sense of proportion in terms of the perspective and it getting larger and it compressing. But this method only does the perspective. You're not done when you've just done the perspective. Now you have to add in the rest of the muscles and the rest of the anatomy of whatever limb you're drawing. Not everybody knows this. Not everybody knows this. They'll just do in the coil and then they think they're done. They're not. You notice that I kind of put the shoulder muscle back in over here. There's a bit of the bicep, the bottom of the bicep down there, right? There's the, or the biceps up here. I don't remember what this is, this is called. I don't remember. Uh, there's the elbow here. You need to fill that back in. There's the... Oh gosh, whatever. The, the forearm muscles, right? I need to know where those are. There's a bit of a wrist bone. I need to remember to put that back in, right? The coils can't do that for you. You need to know what that is. <laughs> so the cons of the coil method is that it doesn't do everything for you. None of these methods will do everything for you. But um, coils are a nice and simple method. They're a really nice and quick one. Um, I don't tend to do coils anymore. I do them when I have to. Um, like if I'm really, really struggling, I will use the coils, but oftentimes I don't. Um, I have a method that's really, really janky, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. <laughs> um, uh, it's not the one that I'm showing next, but it is one of them. But yeah, so that's your coils for you. Next one is a geometry method. Work straight. From basic geometry. Prisms or cylinders. Simple visualization. And easy to relate back to simple perspective. So the geometry method. This is one that I've been teaching some people um, just because they find that the coils don't always work for them and they like to think in like rectangles and whatever better. Um, so the geometry method is more for people who think in a more mathematical sense, I think. Um, so it, it's work because coil method, the coil method also takes a lot of good visualization. Some people aren't as good at that. So some people think better when they think of basic blocks and building blocks. So working straight from basic geometry, which is prisms or cylinders, right? Prisms, I recommend more squares, squares and rectangles. Those tend to work a little bit better, um, because you give yourself more anchors. Every time that you give yourself a corner... Think of like anything that you draw in perspective. If any of you have done any really big background pieces, you know how blessed it feels when you get to do a box, <laughs> right? If you're doing like a normal building or if you're doing like a, like there's a crate on the side of the road or if you got like a trash bin that's like rectangular, you're like, oh yes, a rectangle. It's so easy because it's just a box in perspective, right? That's kind of making this method a bit simpler in that direction, right? So instead of thinking in cylinders and coils you're thinking more in you're putting a box in perspective All right so it's simple visual it's simple visualization and easy to relate back to a simple perspective this by the way this foreshortening i'm doing it for quote-unquote beginners but when you do foreshortening foreshortening is not a beginner thing 
right? When you're drawing, I'm, I'm kind of getting off topic for a second, but foreshortening is not a beginner thing. When you are working with foreshortening, you should have at least one and two point perspective down. It's, it's tough <laughs> for like foreshortening is something that like you need to have a good grip on perspective and visualizing perspective in order to understand. Um, but it's good to listen to you for their future, regardless. If you're not great with perspective to begin with. But yes, it's working straight from the basic geometry prisms of cylinders, and it's simple visualization and easy to relate back to sample perspective. So this is just like... Working with boxes in an environment. That's how I always remember how to spell environment. I say environment. Okay. So if we took our little guy again. I'm going to do a full body foreshorten for this one because it's usually easier to show this one with a torso. Usually better from top down. I like full body foreshortening. It's something that I, it's a, it's my favorite type of foreshortening. Is it the hardest one? Yes. But it's my it's my favorite type. I love full body foreshortening. It feels really satisfying when you get it right. So in this case, if I was to draw the full body, this person's looking up. If I was to draw the full body, yeah, let me just like, oh no, this is fine. If I was to draw the full body, what I would do is I would, for the first upper half of the torso, I would draw in a prism. Oh, you know what? Let's have this person looking to the side. Looking so this body's kind of angled so it's facing this way. If I have the neck, actually, we're going to start with the neck. I draw a cylinder first. Then, based on where that cylinder is, I will draw a prism for the first part of the body. Notice that everything is going downwards. While I draw this, I'm just letting you know that like a lot of art is problem solving. A lot of art is problem solving. And like, it's not even just like, it's problem solving in a lot of different ways. Sometimes, like, there just won't be a tutorial online, so you have to figure out how to do it yourself. And then there's a trapezoid here. And then, if I continued, if I had a sphere here, then what I could do... So I could also attach on a cylinder. I'm actually going to use another prism if I have a prism for the arm. Right? Again, following the shape that the body is doing right now. And bringing it downwards. Art is indeed a surprisingly thinky activity sometimes. Very true. The only reason that I say that art is very non-thinky for me is because the thinky portion has become very automatic. When the thinky portion becomes automatic, that means you've got to push yourself again. So foreshortening and whatnot has become very non-thinky for me. So that's why I try to do more fun foreshortening nowadays. All right, we notice all of the different shapes and stuff. The center of the body is still here. If I was to add the anatomy back on, it's very much like... My brain thinks better with geometry. So if you're wondering why this one looks a lot cleaner than the last one, it's because my method, when I was younger, I used a blend of the coil in this one. Um, yes. Work from geometry. It's like building blocks. Do you need to account for the gesture on the figure, right? Or it'll look rigid. 
jumping ahead of me once again, Marlene. Look, give me a second. <laughs> um. So pros, pros of this method. Let's actually just lock this real quick. Sketchy gives the thought heavy bit. So it's a lot of figuring things out and juggling balls. I've got head empty. Super true. Yeah. The sketching portion is the one that always takes me the longest. It should take you the longest as well, most people. Um, because that's the portion where you're thinking the most. Um, usually if I'm sketching, like when I do comic pages, I will, like when I'm working on the completion portion, like the rendering portion, I love to listen to stories. I love to do stuff like that. If I am writing, if I'm writing and planning out the panels, I am listening to music. I got sometimes wordless. Like I cannot have anything distracting me. <laughs> I hate writing in front of people. I think I've mentioned that before, but I also just like, I can't write in front of people. It's very like, I have to think and I can't have a lot of distractions. It's like the one thing that I can't multitask on. Um, so the pros of the geometry is it's the most accurate. In terms of general anatomy. And form. It's very clean. And easy. The pros of the geometry method is that it is the most accurate in terms of general anatomy and form. You will not get more accurate than these building blocks, right? If you think of them as Lego Duplos, it's very easy to get this proportionally correct because you're thinking in boxes. It's easy to get this one incorrect. It helps you with form consistency. It helps you keep that consistency. It helps you keep that curve and the roundness. But it will not... It has the ability to mess up, right? You can definitely do the coils wrong. You can definitely think of them wrong. But in this case, you just have a really clean looking, nice box. And that tends to be a bit easier to visualize. And it's also just clean. It's really clean looking. It's really nice and clean. All right, some cons. It's stiff. Rigid. No gesture. There's something else. It's high intensity general anatomy form. Very clean, easy. It's stiff and rigid. There's no gesture. Oh, must have a good handle. On perspective. <laughs> um, so the cons of this method are that it is stiff, it is rigid, and there's no gesture. None at all. When you are working with these rectangular forms, you need to kind of have the, the like gesture in the back of your brain. Generally, the... What's it called? The evolution of like working, your working method, tends to start with the gesture, and then it's the form on top of it. So if you start with like your gesture lines, your very, very gesture, very, very basic gesture skeleton, then you can do the forms on top, and then you have your gesture there already. Um, I'm one of those people that tends to not do that because I just have it in the back of my brain regardless. But if you're more of like a structure kind of step-by-step -step person, you're going to want to start with the gesture anyway. Um, but doing this method alone, like just the forms, it, you won't have any gesture with this. And it, you're also working with geometry. So geometry itself is generally very rigid, very man-made looking, which doesn't look great on a body. So it's super stiff and rigid with no gesture. You have to figure out what the gesture is yourself. And you must have a good handle on perspective. If your brain doesn't work well with perspective yet, this method will not work for you. Just hands down. <laughs> it is the most basic form of perspective in terms of it being a box. When you do perspective exercises, you usually work with boxes, right? Rectangular forms. Um, but in terms of you like actually illustrating it like working with it you need to be able to have that because especially like 99% of the time when you're working in force shortening it won't be super extreme um so you won't have any vanishing points right if you have vanishing points you might want to work with those and work with the body with those and you'll have a more accurate um handle of the perspective in that regard but 
if you're working, like, usually when you see your foreshortening, it's like the person's just standing there, eye level, and then there's, like, one or two limbs that are foreshortened a little bit. Or they're slightly not eye level or slightly above, slightly below, but this is, like, a limb or two that's foreshortened once again, right? So you must have a good handle on your perspective before you work with it. I gotta go back to draw a box in that case. Jokes. Okay. The last method, which I need to extend this canvas for, and Medibang has the most annoying canvas method. Uh, let's change this to... Ooh, that's what that does? Okay, let's do that again. This is top center then. Let's say I want this to be the 6,000. Yeah, cool. I'm a bit annoyed that they don't have anchors, but that's fine. Okay. Wait, I'm sorry. Give me a second. I'll be right back. Oh, I'm so sorry. It is the turn of the season. That means that my nose does not agree with me anymore. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the last method that we are going to be working with. It doesn't really have a name. Um, I like to call it... I like to call it anatomy first. <laughs> Check later. <laughs> oh yeah, I sh I needed to I didn't set the latency. That's a late message. Oh good lord, I should have changed that before stream started. I keep forgetting to change the latency. Um. But yes, anatomy first, check later. That's what I like to call it. <laughs> so it deals with... Uh, 
drawing in the anatomical forms. I guess the blank and find out method. Yep, basically. Anatomical forms first. Checking their curve. Perspective afterwards. With specialized coils. So this one, I do not recommend. I'm just going to say that straight out. I do not recommend this one. Not in the slightest. Uh, I'm only sharing it because this is just the way that I work. <laughs> I have the worst methods for everything um, when I actually do my work. So this method is anatomy first, check later. So it, I, I, I work best with this method or best showing off this method with... Um, legs because i really like drawing legs but legs also have the most interesting forms so this is going to take me actually drawing this accurately which is going to be a bit tough to do on stream so if i just have the leg kind of foreshortened a little bit here I'm very used to meteor legs, like legs that are not that thin. A lot of what I draw is like very, very automatic. So <laughs> this is actually, yep. So now that I've actually drawn the leg in, then I go, okay, what's incorrect here? And I go, oh, yes, this looks wrong. This foot should actually be farther back. Let me adjust that real quick. I'm not going to bother doing the full proper foot because I'm too lazy. But then, once I have this in, then what I do... It's based off of that. Then I check how the coils work. Leg, leg indeed. Oops. I'm just a really big fan of drawing legs. It's just a lot of fun. There's a lot of muscle you can live with and deal with and work with. And there's an ankle bit there. Okay. So when I say specialized coils, it means that it follows the curve of the muscle. This is me having the muscles memorized, mostly, or just knowing them from observation. So, drawing the anatomical forms first, checking their curve perspective afterwards, the specialized coils. So the pros. It's not a lot. <laughs> it's very anatomically correct. And it's fast. This method is extremely fast. So the pros are it's very, very anatomically correct. All right? This, this needs a star next to it, actually. <laughs> it's very anatomically correct. You are literally starting with the anatomy. And you're working with it. And you do it without any anything. All right? And it's fast. It's very fast. It is, you're not checking anything. You're not working with anything else. You're going straight into the body and you're not changing it. Cons. <laughs> Difficult. <laughs> Need a good... Oh, 
on perspective, anatomy, and foreshortening. So the cons are that this method is really, really hard. Um, literally just because the only way that you can do it is if you already have a good grasp on perspective anatomy and foreshortening. I think that my grasp is pretty okay. I think that a lot of like my, my anatomy and whatever, my anatomy is pretty good. It's just the, the perspective like and foreshortening, I think are like very, very subpar. But like, as I work more with it, it gets a little bit easier to work with. Like legs are the easiest thing for me to work with. Um... So you need a good grasp on everything before you do this. That's why I'm saying just don't do this method. <laughs> I'm showing it to you again just because this is how I work. Um, but you need a good grasp on perspective, anatomy, and foreshortening before you attempt this at all. So basically make a cocktail of every method. Yes, it's skipping every single step of the other methods and going straight to the meat of it. And then checking afterwards. <laughs> uh, shouldn't the waist, waist or torso be wider here? Um, it could be. I just really like drawing really meaty legs. It's like I could, but I don't want to. <laughs> Body types. These are very, very, it's like somebody has very wide hips and then a slightly more thin midriff. Also, when you sit, the fat of your legs spreads out, right? So it's like if you sit down, unless if you're like really, really thin the fat of your legs will like flop down, right? My best way that I always show this is if you have a bird. When it stands up, it's like this. When it sits, it's like this. You ever seen that picture of a finch? That kind of like, it's in the person's palm of their hand and it just kind of squishes down. Our thighs and our legs work the exact same way. We got gravity on us. So our legs automatically look a little bit larger if you have them on the floor anyway. But okay. So that's kind of my little rundown on foreshortening. Foreshortening is the lesson that always takes the longest. Um, doesn't matter where I teach it. <laughs> foreshortening usually takes the longest. I think this is actually the shortest foreshortening lesson I've ever done. Um, so again, if we kind of run through it all. This is what foreshortening is. The methods, right? We have the coil or ring method. This is like the super, super basic one that every person on the internet uses. We have the geometry method, which is like the very, very structured method. And then this method, which just don't do it. <laughs> but it's how I work. <laughs> so that's the only reason I gave it. Let me actually just separate these so they're a little bit... Oh, wait. Let me give my little... Let me, let me do my little star over here. The star is its... Correct if you know anatomy. First, lol. <laughs> it's accurate, but only if you know the anatomy first. It's kind of like the, a battery's not included at the end of a <laughs> at the end of a thing. Um, I'm I'm gonna crop this afterwards, but yeah. So that's kind of the methods that we have and are available to you. If you find that you are pretty good with anatomy. This is a nice, and you're just looking for ways to speed stuff up. That's a pretty good method. Some people also like the shape layering method. I don't actually know how to do that one that well, um, so I'm not teaching it. Um, I tried teaching it once. It didn't really work out, so <laughs> I'm not going to try to teach it again. Um, but there is the layering shapes method, which is like what a lot of really, really professional artists do. It's very similar to the anatomy first check later kind of deal. Um, but yep. Yeah. I got missed some of it. I missed all of it. No, that's okay. There's always the replay. Remember that we always start at four. Always four. EST. So. Okay. Let's see. But welcome in though, Aku. Okay. Give me a moment. Because I am getting messages everywhere. I'm gonna check the channel because I straight up don't remember what I put for the poll this week. Oh, I'm doing so many tripping and falling. Okay. So, yeah. So, because we were doing foreshortening, um, I set up a few different poses for us, too. 
illustrate. And what I gave myself was um, a bunch of ones. Thank God kicking did not win. Because every single time that I do foreshortening, they're always like, I want to see you drawing somebody punching something. Is somebody kicking something? I'm so bored of drawing that. <laughs> like, I am incredibly bored of drawing people tripping and falling. Another Kirby? No. This is going to be four shortens, so it's just going to be a full body. My method so far has just been guess, draw contours, guess again, draw new contours, repeat. Basically. Am I going to have a background? It's probably just going to be the character. I'm probably just going to draw some OCs this time around because um, my boys have very simple shapes for me to work with. Simple shapes in terms of just I know how to work with them the best. Um, so hopefully this illustration will be at least mostly successful. <laughs> I mostly draw... Kir Kirby is really hard to foreshorten because there's nothing really to foreshorten. So... <laughs> um, I am going to be working with a full-size person. I'm trying to think. How am I going to do this? What kind of orientation should I keep it this way? You know what? Let's do a full illustration, but let's make the outfit a bit more detail-heavy. Yeah. Again, if you ever see the polls, the order of things that are on the poll is, like, what I want to do the most. Um, but yeah, someone dancing was definitely something I really wanted to do because I love drawing dancers. Um, but someone tripping and falling, also excellent. That's a really fun one. So I'm going to be drawing Grayson because he's the easiest one to work for me right now. And he would be the one who would trip and fall, the, who has the highest likelihood of tripping and falling anyway. I'm trying to think of how this... Should I thumbnail this? Probably. Let's just draw it in the corner-ish, and then I'll figure out what my orientation be should be from there. Because I need to foreshorten this. Okay. I'm like, whenever I'm like struggling with a pose, I think about it real hard for a second, and then I work with it from there. So usually I start with the head. A lot of the times... I've always started with the head growing up because the head is usually what'll help you keep it in proportion because the body is measured in heads. Um, but sometimes, like if I'm working with gesture, like if I'm gesture drawing, life drawing, I work from the body first because I do have like how the head and I do have my proportions memorized. So I can work without this method, but... Usually if I am just drawing any old character, I start with the head. Just because the head's, like, the, the most fun part for me to draw. <laughs> I like drawing faces. Sad bull boy. Sad bull boy indeed. It's, been, it's actually been a really long time since I've drawn gray properly. <laughs> there are more than enough illustrations of dude punching camera. Please. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I would have been, I would have lost my mind if kicking one. I'm gonna be real. Whenever there's like an action stream, I'm like, okay, one of them has, like, one of the options has to be a fighting scene. I know everybody wants to see a fighting scene. And like, fighting scenes are another one where it's like, I don't mind them, but I've gotten very bored of them as well. There's very specific fighting scenes that I like, but like the, the very melee kind of fighting scene I've gotten very bored of. is off. I always have to, if I use the back eraser, what's really funky about Medibang is if I use the back eraser on my pen, it doesn't translate. Like the size of the actual eraser doesn't translate. So I have to switch to the eraser tool with my keyboard.
iconic Trinity move. I'm not sure what you're talking about. If you want to know what I was doing last night up until 5 a.m. Well, I mean, we stopped at maybe, like, 4.30. 4.30? Maybe just 4. I was taking BuzzFeed quizzes for, like, 5 hours. <laughs> I'm just going through the BuzzFeed quizzes and taking them for ages, and I have no clue why. <clears throat> oh, you know what? Actually, it started as a conversation about what Pokemon type we would be, and then it devolved into going to quit quizzes to do it, and then it just became a rabbit hole of doing BuzzFeed quizzes. This is what you do when you're an adult and you're bored in the middle of the night. <laughs> it was so late. Like, I don't... <laughs> you have watched The Matrix, right? I have. But it's been a very, very long time. R8, by the way, is rate. I rate that. That's what I'm so used to saying it as. Right? I've always seen as, like, it's... R8. Right. Though I don't tend to use, like... I do use slang, but, like... I've never seen it used that way before. Maybe I'm just old, I don't know. <laughs> Adult is a strong word for me. You're you are though. That's the <laughs> So remember that when I am drawing See I have a problem with forced with forcing things to be in view when I'm doing full body foreshortening because I'm so used to I really want the torso bits to show but they really won't be it's unfortunate yeah yeah <laughs> must remember the trinity move the high jump slow-mo kick he's very much in other media like Shrek it has been- it has- when was the last time I watched The Matrix? It has been actual years. The last time I watched The Matrix, I was 13, I think. It's been over- it's been almost eight years <laughs> since I've watched The Matrix. I have no clue. It's been a really, really long time. The Matrix is a movie that I thought was good. Like, I thought it was really good, but it was not my favorite one. It's just, like, it wasn't a movie that, like, was life-changing for me. It's a pretty iconic scene, is it? It's been a very long time. The main thing that I remember from The Matrix is, like... Yeah, no, it's been eight years. It's just, it was not, like, the most, like... Infinitely amazing, like, oh my gosh, I'm... I'm my... my life is better for after watching this movie you know like it's not like like for me the that movie for me is spirited away like ghibli spirited away i have that movie memorized like no joke most ghibli movies i have memorized that stuff is like been ingrained in my memory i have ponyo memorized i have spirited away memorized princess mononoke howl's moving castle i think i've watched a good like five times howl's moving castle i've watched a good five times ponyo i've watched five times Spirited Away, I think I've watched in the tens. I think I've watched that movie 11, 12 times. I love Spirited Away. Every time you put that, I'm, I'm watching that movie. I'll just look it up. It's the, the Trinity move. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts. No. Um, Trinity move. Matrix. Fight scene. Matrix. There we go. I just need to look up images. Oh! Yes. I do remember this. Okay.
It's been a very long time. Yes, I remember this scene. <laughs> oh, I googled it. I understand. <laughs> Kiki's delivery service for you. I do really, really love Kiki's delivery service. It was like Howl's Moving Castle is so good. I would actually. Lo I love Howl's Moving Castle's soundtrack. Um, I always. I I said I joke to my best friend. I'm like, listen. If I don't get to dance to the Howl's Moving Castles theme at my wedding, then we're not having the wedding. That's just straight up what's going to happen, alright? Kind of an epic hand, I'm not going to lie. Very gestural. Sometimes you just nail a hand, you know? I think I have to fix this, actually. I like the pose I'm going for, though. Child can't catch, just can't catch a break, can he? No, no, never. That's what the story's about. <laughs> no, that's too far back. It's just here. So my my brain is like no you gotta keep adding in more but no that's incorrect it's actually just here and this arm goes back here which is foreshortened It should be more foreshortened than that. This should be farther this way, yes. This is a very, very exaggerated form of foreshortening. This you will not see as often. But I always find that exaggerated foreshortening is a lot easier than, like, like just normal foreshortening. Favorite thing from Howl's Moving Castle are the demons with those little hats. The demons with little hats. Maybe I don't have Howl's Moving Castle memorized. All I'm thinking of are the soot sprites. And that's from Spirited Away. Or I'm thinking of little white creatures and that's from... Am I dumb? What am I? <laughs> I'm actually fried. What am I? Wait. They break through the glass. Oh! Oh, the henchmen. The goopy henchmen. I don't know why I was thinking that they were little. Like, little, like, moving. Yes, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I've always known them as like the slime henchmen, the witch's henchmen. I never thought of them as demons because they were like summons. That's so weird. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It's the slimy henchmen from, it's the witch's henchmen. Yes. I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm actually for ideal. Anywho. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. The henchmen. Because they were, they're a spell. They're not actually demons. They're just uh, like a token of her magic. That's why I was so confused. I'm like, what demons? I'm like, I don't remember any demons in Howl's Moving Castle. Yeah, they're the witch's henchmen. They're just, uh, they're summons of her magic. Oh my gosh. I can't, I hate that I can't use the shortcuts that are already embedded into my tablet. The best way to accentuate any kind of foreshortening is with clothing. You need something to look rounder, draw a sleeve on, give them bracelets. Listen. 
this is actually incorrect. Hang on, let's fix this. So this is how the body is going. If this is what's happening here, then what should be happening Yeah, my favorite, I have a lot of favorite, like, side thingies that kind of happen in Ghibli movies. I think one of my favorites is, um, I act, I know their direct name. It's <laughs> Spirited Away. I love the little chickens. Uturi-sama. It's the chickens with, like, the or the big ducklings that have, like, the, the leaf on the top of their head when they're in the hot springs. I love that little, just little bit. I had a screen. That was my laptop screensaver for a really long time when I used to use a laptop. Um... I love the soot sprites from Spirited Away. I loved um, the little sisters from Ponyo. Um, little sister goldfish. I loved the little white rattlers. Little rattling spirits from uh, Princess Mononoke. I love a lot of Ghibli stuff. It's just <laughs> I love No Face from Spirited Away. Great design. Especially when he went a little bit wacko. That was great. No, that causes a tangent. So I shouldn't force it. Really what's happening here is that the foot's ending like back here. Okay, I gotta ask, hands are drawn at the same size of the face, but not the same deal with foreshortening. How do you figure that out? It depends on what size your wrist is here. Depending on the size of the wrist, you can compare the size of the wrist to the size of the hand. The second thing that you can always compare in terms of, um, like, referential sizing and whatnot is, like, your wrist, right? So depending on how large the wrist is, you'll be able to draw the hand from that size as well. Um, that's some good drawing software that you can get used to easily and try to upgrade in file or packet. Yes, so Daria is going to dig that up for you. There's a, we have a video about that free software that is great. Um, non-free software, I really, really, like, I'm, I'm primarily a Photoshop user, um, but, um, Clip Studio is amazing as well. Definitely recommend it. Clip is very, very Illustrator heavy. Um, Photoshop has more photo editing capabilities along with the illustration portions. Um, they're not easy to get used to, but both of them are industry standard. Um, I tend to switch between the both depending on what I'm actually doing. Let's make this a little bit more interesting. I'm going to have them curled here. What the fire's dude dude name haven't what did the fire what was the fire dude's name in Hells? Did he have a name? Yes, that was Calcifer. Calcifer is amazing. I loved his voice in Japanese and I loved his voice in English. He had a really, really good um dub. Howl's Moving Castle had a really, really good dub, actually. It's one of my favorites. Every time someone asks about art program, CSP chanting cues up in the background, basically. Um Yeah, Calcifer, what's amazing is that you can buy, like, stuff 
falcifer themed products and one of them is like a it's a spatula so you can like flip your eggs with calcifer it's a great time i saw them at hot topic once but i'll never i'll never go back to get them because i don't think they're available there anymore because <laughs> that was years ago <laughs> Did I read it? No, I did not read the book. I've just seen the movie in an order a very large amount of times. Should I put another person here? Should I put Mo here? I'm like, I'm trying to think how much time I got. I got time, it's just I don't know if I want to. You know what? No, I'm not going to because that might just take a bit longer. So maybe I literally just will. Um, do a background in here because I'm gonna have to figure out a planer thing. Yeah, probably. That's fine. Let's just do this. I know that the book for Howl's Moving Castle is very different. That's usually how it goes with most things, regardless. Like, if you're basing it off of a book, then it's going to be, like, really different from the novel. I read some of the original story, but never finished it. Valid. It's very valid of you. I just, like, I, I have not had time to read in a very long time. Oh, you know what I did the other day? I did five-point perspective. The most joke thing is that I did it traditionally. So, like... <laughs> I tried five-point, but I did not do it digitally. So I actually did it by hand with ink. So what I'm doing right now is I'm establishing a, a ground. Because I figured that I should probably... If I'm not going to put another person, it's a bit empty. So I figured I should probably just do some kind of background. And uh, oh, now that I'm looking at it, we should be at slightly different angles. It was awesome. Thank you. The final version is not very PG, so I couldn't actually share the final finished version. Um, but it was for an, a school project. That work was insane. Thanks. Thankies. Yeah, you would have seen it, Daria, because it's in the official uh, Wing Canvas Discord server. <laughs> Drawing an a complicated outfit foreshortened is more difficult than doing the figure. Yes. 100%. You ever draw a ball gown foreshortened? I have. I don't recommend it. <laughs> I'm just, just saying that right now. I don't know what these are. I, do <laughs> I haven't figured that out. Maybe this is the school hallway. I don't know. This is just going to be lines only, by the way. I'm not going to be able to shade this in. Based on the magnitude of what I'm drawing. Ugh. 
This is what I mean by like boxes are blessed. It's it's so easy. <laughs> They're so nice. Oops, let's do this. Let's facial storytelling. You can't hear anything? I'm speaking. <laughs> well, I speak every once in a while. I am currently just very, very... I'm speaking right now. I'm just, you know... I kind of take bouts of silence. If I'm focusing, I take bouts of silence. Me apologies. Your volume could also be down if you can't hear me now. Hopefully everyone else can hear me. Sometimes I just kind of stop talking because I'm like, oh shoot, I need to focus for a sec so I can actually figure out what it is that I'm doing. Oh, I need to save this. Whoa. Hooray. This is 48-1, but I, re I misnamed the other one by accident. <laughs> okay, now I can work on the lining portion. Let's go. Okie dokie, okie dokie, okie dokie. Because a lot of these are just like. Yeah, you can hear fine. Okay. I figured just a little bit. Don't know. Okay. Uh, my doodles during the stream will be pirate lady and normal man. I'm sure you can guess which. Yes. <laughs> I can indeed guess which. I need to draw normal man more. I miss drawing him. Uh, I don't like how this brush translates onto Medibang. I like added it on because I was like... Like, I should try using my own brush, and I straight up just don't like how it handles, so I'm just gonna go back to using the G pen. Because straight up, I'm just not vibing with it. There's just not a very wide variety on Medibang. Start of a great story. Oh, yes, it is indeed a great story. You can, uh, I shouldn't talk about it. <laughs> I'm like, I keep having to remind myself. I'm like, mm, okay. <laughs> yes. Any of you watched the new Nintendo Direct that came out the other day? Bro. Yo, when they announced Earthbound coming to the Switch, dude, I lost it. I lost my mind. I was watching it with my best friend. 
<laughs> they showed up or found it. I was like, yo, let's go because I have a Nintendo Online account. So I'm like, yo, now I can actually play Earthbound instead of just like, you know, being like, bro. Instead of just being like, yo, I love Earthbound, but I've never played it. Now I can't actually play it because it's on the Switch. Um, there's a port. Uh, they're cowards for not um, localizing Mother 3. I think that they're cowards. Um, although I know that like if they localize it, they're going to take out all the best lines. Because I love those so much. Like Mother 3 is a masterpiece. It really is. It's such a good game. Um... Earthbound is amazing as well. Like, I, I love Earthbound. With all of my heart. But Mother 3 is just... It's so much darker. It's so much more real. Like, I love Mother 3 so much. Um, so glad that came out. And, you know, Carby. Bro. Actually, I'm so excited. Like, Kirby in the Forgotten Lands, I am... First of all, I'm going to pre-order it. Second of all, I am playing that thing like crazy. Kirby games are usually never... They never usually take me that long. But neither did Pokemon games. And I'm still playing Arceus. So, <laughs> like, I don't know if they're doing too much different with Kirby. It look, It's very different already with the Z-axis added in. So I'm like, hmm... A Tolkien fan here, not me, but I'd like to know what y'all think about the new series. Is it a new Tolkien book? I didn't even know that. <laughs> I haven't read Lord of the Rings in so long because, like, it's like I when I mean so long, I haven't read it since I was in single digits. And I've watched the movies, obviously, but I haven't watched those in a very, very long time either. I liked them. I'm gonna be real. I me I I don't I know them better than. The Matrix. Because <laughs> I was always a fantasy kid more than a sci fi kid. Yeah, I had no clue. I didn't know he had a new series. Oh, there's a TV series. That's a TV series? Is a Lord of the Rings TV series? Or is it just like a Tolkien TV series? Tolkien's the one who wrote the lip, the, the thing, right? Oh, it's Amazon Prime. That's why I haven't seen it. I don't have Amazon Prime. <laughs> it's kind of hard for Tolkien to write new books right now. Oh, you've got a point, actually. I'm actually fried. I'm so sad. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, okay. I'm actually fried. I'm, like, my... Yeah. Wow. I didn't... <laughs> Yo, you can tell I was up until 5 a.m. <laughs> hi, hi, hello. I forgot... That Tolkien was on a live. <laughs> right? He is right. <laughs> Tolkien. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's been 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> uh... I need to go back into the streams and change their latency before I get out of YouTube Studio today because it's it's a bit obnoxious to have the stream this far back because I've been having it at like ultra low latency recently, which like helps a lot. Uh yeah. I almost choked when you said that. My bad, yeah, sorry. I am like, yeah. I'm kinda out of it. Like <laughs> just like just letting you know. I mean, I guess people figured that out already, all things considered. I 
I watched and loved the movie. Me and my sister busted a long laugh. Got Gandalf's breakdance. Lol. Yeah, it's a great movie. I I'm yeah. As a kid, I was a really really big fantasy person, like way more than sci-fi. As I got older, I started getting more into sci-fi, and I preferred sci-fi over fantasy. But I've always I've always loved fantasy. Yes, welcome in. Welcome. Keep me awake. We're here for another half hour or so. As I draw this one. <laughs> kind of out of it, but at least I know what Disney princess I am. Yup, a lot of Mulan and Belle, apparently, according to BuzzFeed. <laughs> what did we do? It was what Disney princess we are. It was, can you, can you guess my name based off of what foods you like? That one was terrible. It was like, of course they're not going to get my name. I have to a few so I can't say that. Hi. Hi. Um, what else? There was like... I changed some of the post feeds you guys did last night. Did you really? <laughs> it was great. Yeah, it's a time. It's a time. I think my favorite one was like the take this quiz because only Americans will get it because like Canada is so similar to America. Like I got most of it. I got a higher score than an actual American. It was really funny. There was another one that I scored lower on, which was like, can you put Canadian provinces in the right place? And like that one, it was like... <laughs> It was like, you are definitely an American. I'm like, no, I'm just bad at geography. <laughs> you try the onion one? No. Uh, some of those buzzfeed quizzes were so nonsense, I cannot even remember what they were. They were just words strung together in random order. So true. <sighs> there was one that was like... Oh my gosh. I don't, I don't remember half of them. I just remember, like, doing the... Po we did, like, three different... I lost the 50-50 for a few of those. Same. Um, sometimes I would remember where it actually was, but I didn't remember where the province was. It was like, I'd be like, oh yeah, it's like Yellowknife is in so-and-so, but I don't remember which one is that. <laughs> so I was like, I don't remember which province is which. I haven't... I. Yeah. Listen, I'm very bad with geography. I've always been really bad with geography. So it's just... <laughs> I'm a really bad Canadian, guys. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of weird ones. We did, like, three separate, like, Pokemon-type ones. I never got the same one in any of them. It was, like... I think I got, like... I got electric ones, and then I got steel ones, and I got normal ones. It was never the same each time, every time. There was a friend of ours who got consistently electric type. And we were like, yeah, that's, that's, that's you. That's definitely you. <laughs> oh, there was a Jimmy Neutron one. I got Sheen. I don't remember what the actual quiz was. I think it was like based on your food, like what your food preferences were or something. And I was like, you are Sheen. I'm like, yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not high energy enough to be Sheen, but fair enough. <laughs> I do want I got fire. Let's go. One of them got consistently fire as well. I'll let you know who afterwards. But yeah. <laughs> I would make more Canada jokes, but I think I'm currently outnumbered here. Yeah, probably. <laughs> the funny thing about taking all those Disney princess ones was that I was not a Disney kid growing up, so I, like, I hadn't watched half of the Disney, like, the majority of the Disney movies that were there. Like, Alice in Wonderland is just, I love Alice in Wonderland. It's, like, it was the only one that I actually knew anything about. And there was a bunch of others. I remember watching Pocahontas in, like, sixth grade. And I think we had Ariel running absently on, like, the television while I was doing something. But, like, I, 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 I never actually paid attention. Almost all of them were food. It was just food. Yeah, the food quizzes. There were so many of them. It's just like, bruh, why do you have so many food quizzes? 
it was actually ridiculous. Like, working, like, doing those quizzes was, like, the weirdest. I haven't done, like, proper quizzes. Like, I haven't done, like, any kind of, like, personality quiz that isn't, like, a Myers-Briggs or the Enneagram test since I was, like, 12 or something. So it was, like, I'm like, yo, <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, I did do the Enneagram and the Myers-Briggs very recently, though. I did it with a, a different friend of mine. I got... I'm still an Ian, ENFP, if you want to know. I'm an ENFP T. Um, ENFP-T. Turbulent. Is what that stands for. Um, and then on the Enneagram test, I am a four-wing three. I'm very four-leaning, but I'm four-wing three. If you wanted to know me from South Asia, understandable. <laughs> yeah, I'm from uh, I'm from True North, strong and free, a cold place. Yes, we had a foot of snow recently. It was nice, actually. It was like, yo. Oh, we did a Breath of the Wild quiz too. I just remembered, cause it was like. And one of the questions was like, what's the, what extreme, what, what weather would you choose out of these? And it was like, one of them was extreme cold. And I instantly was like, yeah, extreme cold. One of the guys was like, yeah, of course you'd choose that. I was like, was it? <laughs> like, of course you'd choose that Canadian. I'm like, all right, <laughs> you need to chill. I was so delirious last night, too, actually. I was very, very unhinged. The more that the night drones on, the less of a filter I have, so. Again, I'm really only planning on doing the lines for this one, so I'm trying to make them a little bit more fun, a little bit more stylized, um, because I don't have to worry about uh, color seeping through any of them at any point, because there's a lot of big gaps between my lines right now. So I'm not really worried about the gaps, because it's not like anything's going to go inside of it, regardless. I'm also not worrying about cleaning my lines up too much, because I want to give them a bit of extra fun pizzazz, in terms of just them... Um, moving and whatnot I've been doing a lot of traditional lining so I'm kind of taking my techniques from that back into my digital that's why it's good to do both traditional and digital I find it, it helps you with your versatility um, when you work digitally it'll teach you how to work traditionally when you work traditionally it'll teach you how to work digitally it works both ways so it's usually nice to work with both because then you can whoops because then you can have interchangeable techniques I was that guy because of course you'd choose that. You and someone else as well. Both of you were like. <laughs> it's so cold here. It's perfect for my bros event tomorrow. Nice. Oh gosh. I'm going to go to bed early. Watch me. I'll do it. <laughs> I won't. I know I won't. I'll be up playing video games. Notice that when the when I foreshorten, right when the when the portion of the body comes closer, I thicken up the line work. Uh, this is just to help um, enhance the foreshortening. Usually, if you change your line weighting up when the thing gets closer, it helps enhance the perspective a little bit more. And I'm actually gonna thicken it up a little bit more because I think I can push it. Um, but it helps a lot. Usually, if you change up your line work while you work, it helps a lot. Um, or like, especially with foreshortening, because foreshortening, you really need a lot of help with really pushing that. 
It's like when the stuff gets farther away, it's easier to work with much thinner line work. Or it, may, it makes it look a lot better if you work with thinner line work because when you do that, it creates this nice, really like as if it's fading into the background look. I actually don't need this because he's a child, so his fingers are going to be a lot more smooth. He is 12. It's 4 a.m. and out on my terrace watching this while my family gets everything ready tomorrow. Oof, 4 a.m. Sheesh. Hope you have fun for your event, though. So, what am I doing tomorrow? I straight up have no clue. It's Sunday. I'll probably be working on an essay. Not gonna lie. Like, I, <laughs> I think I have two essays. I have two essays, too, don't I? Hang on. I need to check. I straight up don't remember. I feel like I do. Don't I? <laughs> I do not know what this normal man looks like. Seal, so will give him a pew pew machine and use the Pokemon AU version. Yeah. Feel free to steal from my Twitter. All of his stuff is... I've drawn him a few times in the thread. It's Saturday tomorrow. It is Saturday tomorrow. I'm teaching. <laughs> I have classes to teach. <laughs> LOL. Oh my god, I almost slept in. I, I was almost like, yo, I can sleep in. I'm playing video games all day. No, yeah, I have classes. I have classes to teach. Big jokes. That's so funny. Anyway. Sorry if any of my students are in chat. I completely forgot. Um. Uh... Ooh, yeah. I have... Oh, okay. That's actually not that bad. On Tuesday, I have that due. Yep. Wednesday, I have that due. Yep. Thursday, I have that due. Yep. Okay. Okay. One essay. I have one essay due. <laughs> Jesse, losing it? I've been losing it for months now. I've been losing it for months now. There is absolutely, like, I... Yeah. I have... I'm pretty sure I have lost it. Period. Hi, Lydia again. No worry, Mo's Arts. Welcome in. We've got about 15 minutes left. There's always time for you to watch it afterwards. Do not fret. You valiantly tried to keep it together. It ain't going well, I think. Oh, no. No. Definitely not. I am... I am... I'm in a haze right now. I, I don't remember half the things I said this stream. I remember the lesson portion. I remember kind of bringing up that I did a lot of BuzzFeed quizzes yesterday night. I straight up do not remember half the stuff I have said in this stream. To be fair, that's what most streams go like. I don't remember them afterwards because... Okay. Let me tell you how these work, right? When I'm streaming, my attention is divided between drawing and talking. And like half the times, the drawing takes up more of my attention. Um, but I have the ability to speak while I am drawing. So if I am drawing while I am talking, and then you ask me a question about what I was saying, I probably won't remember what I was saying. So you'll have to remind me. <laughs> also, this stream is super like high latency right now. So like, it's like not synced up very well.
So, like, my apologies. Fan calls love of Ghibli movies. Yes, that as well. My love of Ghibli. My Friday class conveniently ends at 5.35. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't really help you there. John, some Apex Legends fan art using your color stream. Excellent. I have never played Apex. Um, I'm not an online games person, so a lot of the times I don't play, like, anything remotely competitive. <laughs> I'm probably never going to play League. I had no interest in Valorant. You know what? I'm going to solidify that. I'm never going to play League. Period. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Um, no interest in Roblox. No interest in Fortnite. No interest in, you know. I'm very, like, heavy story single player game type person. So that tends to just always be my game of choice. I like horror as well, but I don't play them that often. His hair is kind of messed up, but it's a bit hard to translate a bowl cut into long around hair. <laughs> this is incorrect. Very much so. I'm probably just going to leave it like that because, like, it keeps the fluidity, keeps the life back in it. I don't have to worry about keeping it too rigid. I'm just going to fix some areas around. Yes, good for reference. Reference these videos are all for you to reference. Do not fret. <sighs> okay, there's about ten minutes left. I can finish this in ten minutes. This is a good amount of stuff. Yes, I gotta get student feedback again. What am I teaching tomorrow? I don't know. <laughs> this is fine. This is just how it goes every week. Okay. You know what? I'm actually going to change the angle of this book because what's happening right now is it's very, very, like... Control-V, please. Oh, thank you. Okay, wait. Control-X, Control-V, please. Thank you. I'm going to change the angle of this book. Change this. Yeah, because that makes it more interesting. Students will come in wondering what they're learning today. They'll be surprised, even you. This is literally what my classes are like. It's like, I'll be like, all right, what are we doing? And then I'll kind of pull up the curriculum and I'll come up with the lesson on the spot. That's literally how I teach. Like, it's... <laughs> or it'll be there for me, but, like, because I don't write the curriculum. Um, it depends on who's running the, the class. I believe that uh, lovely Yuri writes the digital art class, and then Felicia writes the cartooning and anime. So, all I really have to do is sit back and teach it like a bozo. But, <laughs> um...
what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to be careful of feathering. And when you feather your lines, it ends up making them look a lot messier. Feathering is like when you do your lines like this as your outline. That works for fur, not so much for anything else. Um... So if I do feather, then I try to make it a minimum, or minimize it as much as I can. Like sometimes I just can't do it in a single stroke, so I just do a few little ones. So I try to go back over them as, as like closely as I can, which takes a lot of practice by the way. Like, going back over your lines over and over and, like, making them a single track as you possibly can. Might actually want to fix this. Yeah, we're almost done here. This might end a bit early, depending on how quickly I finish this. tiled floor or just having a grid will change everything it really will it makes everything just look like 20 times nicer <laughs> it really assists with perspective it really helps push your your scene This looks awesome, by the way. Thank you. I'm losing it. I think it's okay. I think it's a bit busy, actually. Yeah, it would have helped if there was color, but I'm not going to do color. You know what? Let's just... Let's not make this lockers. Let's just add a door. This is floor to ceiling, is what we can say. And we can say that this is lockers. And this can also be a door. Yes? No. I think I can just get rid of that. That's fine. This is just a wall. <laughs> it's a wall now. Um. Oh, oh, good heavens. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't want to overwork it, or else I'm just going to get mad at it myself. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, you know what? Hang on. Let's just... To make myself feel better about these. Okay, cool. That's going to do it for this stream. Yeah, okay. It's about four minutes early, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this stream. Thank you so, so much for joining guys again if you don't know too much about the studio never been here before don't know too much about wayne canvas we're not just a youtube channel we're also an art studio so if you'd like to check out the classes that we offer be sure to check them out in waynecanvas.com we have a bunch of classes that we are offering which i am teaching tomorrow i don't teach all of them but i teach a few of them um, i totally forgot that i was teaching but you know <laughs> we're here now um this piece that you see in front of you, including the lesson that we learned earlier, will be available on our Discord for free as JPEGs. So if you would like to join the Discord, see the um, JPEGs that I have previously posted and the ones that are currently there, be sure to go check those out. Um, and if you'd like my working files, this one is only one layer, so I don't think I'll do a working file of this one. But if you'd like to check out my working files, you're going to have to join our page.